guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are here for a super duper cool video and that is transplanting seedlings. So as you guys can see behind me, um, my ghetto rigged sort of tower here and this is just to boost the seedlings up closer to um, the light and up here I have an LED grow light which is why it looks so funky. I tried turning a light on back there so hopefully it helps with the purple color or whatever but yeah so I have these boosted up closer to the light and the reason for this is because you want to prevent the seedlings from stretching which um, is where they come out and they try to reach 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 up for the light and they get so heavy that their stems aren't uh, strong enough to hold them up and then they're going to fall over. So you want to avoid that. So here I have, which is a lot more than the last video. I didn't record this because I figured why it's the exact same thing I just did. But here I have planted several other new seeds. I have a jalapeno, a spinach plant, um, kale plant. Um, these are both the pepper plants, the tomato plants, a lettuce plant, and then three cilantro plants back here. And so what we have here is we have two sprouted tomato plants, and I will just show you this up close. So this is one of the tomato plants, and this little guy is one of the pepper plants. And I just noticed right before I filmed this video... We also have a little lettuce seedling, if you guys can see that. Um, okay, so the reason and the way that I know it's time to transplant these seedlings and get them out of the seedling tray, because this seedling tray is not ideal, is because... I don't know if you guys can see or not, but there's a little root sticking out of the bottom of this rooter plug. And this is called a tap root. And this means that the plant is ready to be transplanted and start getting fed nutrients. Feed the plant, you have to make sure that the plant can breathe and everything in between. You have to maintain the pH and things like that. And I'm going to kind of give you guys a base introduction to that and what I'm going to be doing with my little seedlings today. So, like I said before, in hydroponics, you are the one who controls the food. So, when you plant... Um, when you plant things in soil, it's, the plant is fed by the nutrients and the natural organic things that are already in the soil. But when you start with just basic water like this, where this is literally just three and a half gallons of water, um, you have to plant, uh, feed the plant some other way. And this way is through nutrients. So I'm just going to show you the nutrients that we are using. So we're using the General Hydroponics Flora series. And this is one of the most common um, <clears throat> nutrients used when growing hydroponically. So first you're going to start with Flora Micro because you always start with Flora Micro. I'm really not sure why, but that's just what they they say. Shake it beforehand, and for what I have, I'm putting 15 milliliters of um, the Flora Micro. And then I'm just going to give that a good mix. And um, <clears throat> never ever pre mix these. Nutrients. I don't think you can pre-mix any nutrients, but I know for these for a fact, if you're using general hydroponics, never pre-mix them. Okay, so next in the schedule is um, Flora Grow, and this helps, this is contained nitrogen, which, which helps with the growing process. And this is also 15 milliliters already measured out. All right, and lastly in the Flora series is um, Flora Bloom, and this just helps with the fruiting and the flowering of the plant. Um, and once again, you are going to add 15 milliliters. Um, now, this is completely optional, but I, well, all of it's really optional. You can add whatever you want to your plants. But I am, in the beginning, I like to add a little booster, so... This is 
This is Rapid Start and um, it's also by the same company and this helps um, promote root growth especially during a transplant and things like that. Something that could be traumatic for the plant. Um, this just kind of gives it that little boost that it needs. So that's three milliliters of that. Now your tomatoes have something that is going to feed them. They have food. Um, now what you want to do is you want to maintain the pH level of the water. The pH level is the acidity of the water and if the water gets too acidic it can kill the roots and it can cause things like root rot and things like that that will just completely destroy your plant and things that you just <clears throat> you just don't want. So in a tomato plant you want to maintain the pH between about 5.8 and 6.3. So I'm just going to show you what you do the pH after you add the nutrients. So I'm just going to show you what the um, pH is right now with my regular water and um, with my regular water and nutrients. And this is what I'm using. I ordered this on Amazon and um, I'm not going to lie, this was kind of expensive, but um, when you read the reviews on Amazon, honestly, um, paying the cheap one, paying for the cheap ones just isn't worth it because you're going to keep on buying them over and over again. So we went ahead and got the expensive one. Besides that, I really want to be able to maintain the pH correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and test what this is. Okay, so if you can see right there, the pH of this water currently was 6.5, and that is too high for tomato plants. So we need to lower that. To lower that, I am using by the same company, General Hydroponics. This is pH down, and this um, adds some acid to the water to be able to lower it. Um, and we're really not that far off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add probably like half a milliliter. All right, now that I have added some pH down, I have the pH to 5.9, which is right where we want it. We wanted it between 5.8 and um, 6.3. And I suggest you keep everything in a book. Um, I just have this little book right here. And I suggest that you check your pH and PPM every single day. So as I just mentioned, checking PPM. So that is done with this little guy. This is a PPM meter. So this is a PPM meter. And what this does is this tests the parts per million of nutrients inside of your water. And the reason checking this every day is important is because this is gonna tell you how much your plants are eating and if you're using unneeded nutrients. So checking your PPM every single day is going to show you if your PPM is going up or down or staying the same. And what you want it to do is you want it to stay the same as the water goes down, which means that your plant is eating and drinking the same amount. You have everything just perfect, even for that plant. If um, your water is going down and your PPM is going up, that means that it's becoming more concentrated and your plant is thirsty. It's drinking more water. If your water is staying the same and your PPM is going down, your plant is eating more. So monitoring the PPM is very, very important. For a tomato plant, I have read several resources that say that um, a PPM between about four and 600 is good um, for seedlings, for tomato seedlings. And I have my PPM right at 515, which um, is good. So what another good thing that you want to watch the PPM for is because a seedling, a any kind of plant, whether it's a seedling or a full grown plant can get nutrient burn and that's when you add too, too many nutrients to the water and it burns the plants. And so watching the PPM is good because every plant is different regardless of the guidelines, every plant is different and one plant might burn at 500 ppm and so next time you know when you go in and you change that water that it needs to be a lower ppm or your plant is going to get nutrient burned so the ppm is very very important in the um 
in the nutrient equation. Now I'm going to show you how you are going to um, move your um, tomato seedling, how you are going to transplant it um, into this bucket because all we have right now is an open bucket. So um, what you want is you want one of these little net pots and this just fits right on these five gallon buckets just perfectly and um, as you can see it's just a little net. Um, and this is where the plant sits and the roots are just going to come down here into the water eventually. So you want to set that down and you want to have a barrier between the net and the plant. Um, that's just my own personal preference. So you want to take um, some clay pellets and this is the brand Hydrocorn. And the, this is the grow medium that we use. So I'm just putting some pellets right there on the bottom. And then I'm just going to take my little seedling right here and um, boost them up a bit more. And then I'm going to surround this little guy. rocks. Now you want to be careful um, not to squish the fragile little stem between two rocks because it is very possible. So what we have here is our tiny little seedling safely inside of our net pot. Yep, that's that. Okay, so we are back in the grow tent, and um, <clears throat> I have my bucket right here, ghetto tower right here. Um, so on this side, this far side of my bucket, I have a little hole that I drilled right through, and this is an air tube, an airline tubing, um, just like for aquariums or whatever. I have this hooked up to an air pump, and I'm just running it into the back of the hole. Um, like I said before, um, you are responsible for everything for the plant. That includes providing the plant with oxygen. This is an air pump. I'm hooking the tube right up to it. Um, and this is what's going to supply your plant with its oxygen. Don't mind the bubbles, but as you can see clearly from them, the bucket is now getting oxygen. This is a ton of oxygen, it's a ton of bubbles, and what this is going to do, and going back to the reason that I put this water at the level that it was, is because this reaches right underneath the bottom of this net pot, these bubbles do, and um, which will promote the roots to grow down. So they will sense the moisture underneath, they'll sense the rocks that are um, wet and they, the roots will slowly go down and another way that you can really promote the roots to grow downward which is what I'm going to do is you can take a cup and you can just grab some of the water from the bucket and just pour it over the top and the water going down is going to uh, show the roots where the water is and the gravity will just kind of lead them to the pool of water. So that is that for starting a deep water culture bucket. That is called a bubble bucket and it's a five gallon bucket. Super easy, super easy to maintain, super easy to start. Um, these tomatoes will probably get a nutrient change every two weeks until they get a little bigger and they're drinking more water and then they'll probably be moved up to weekly. Um, Tomatoes also need to be sprayed down when they get a little bit bigger, so that's also something that needs to be considered. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plant this tomato, this pepper, and just this tomato and this pepper today, and um, keep the rest of these seedlings up here close to the light. I have been um, spraying all my rooter plugs with this little thing, and I spray them probably three or four times a day, which keeps them nice and moist. This is pH water as well as a little bit of rooter um, 
the rapid start. So that is the end of this very, very long video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me get my hydroponics garden started. I'm really, really excited to take you on this journey. And now we have our very first little plant started in its own little bucket. And I'm so, so, so excited for you guys to join me on this journey as I grow my own food. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below with your thoughts. If you want to follow more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And don't be afraid to stalk me on all my social networking channels linked below. I will see you guys next time. Bye.